Hello everyone and welcome to another Rise of Kingdoms video. This is Dragothian here and today we've got another installment of our Commander Mastery series going with Saladin on this one. I've had a lot of requests on this about his talent build, about what his best uses are, who his best pairings are. Wanted to go through the actual character, the commander with you, go through his skills just like we always do, go through his talents just like we always do, uh, and then also his pairings. I want to make sure you guys are aware of the best pairings that you can get hooked up with this really, really solid, sought after, and powerful commander. So first things first, what is Saladin? He is one of the best PvP so on the battlefield, arc, KVK, open field, fight, commanders for cavalry. And he's a commander that can be used in a multiple diff multitude of different ways. Um, again, open field, he works really, really well. He's a good rallier. So he's, he does really well in rallies, and I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit later too. And then he does have some uses in garrison as well, which I will also talk about. So very versatile commander, and those are the kinds of commanders that I like to really maximize, which is why I've got a level 60, I've got an expertise, and I've actually got three builds for this guy, depending on what use that I want to use for him. So I'll go through all three of those, then we'll switch to the pairings, and I'll talk about that, and then we'll wrap it up. So I hope you enjoy this. We're going to pop right in. Again, this is a sponsored content creation channel of Rise of Kingdoms. I hope you enjoy this, and we're going to pop right in. So, Saladin. Let's go through the skills really, really quickly. Uh, he has a an active direct damage skill that has a damage factor of 1,700, also reducing the march speed of the target by 50% and the healing effects received by 50% when expertise for five seconds. That's pretty substantial. It's five seconds where the, the target is very, very slow. Um, similar to the Ark debuff if you're carrying the Ark of Osiris in uh, Osiris League or Ark of Osiris. Uh, and then healing effects received. Uh, huge, huge debuff. That really kind of hits Richard right in the feels. Um, and then you've got other commanders like Double C and Freddy, Pelagius. Those all have heals as well. Joan even, Cleo. Those all have heals. So this is a very, very versatile first skill. It does a lot for you. It does damage. It reduces their ability to get away. And it also stops them from healing as well. That's always good. Those are good, really, three really good things. Second, really good stat skill. Very passive. So you just get 20 attack, 20% attack, 20% defense, and 5% march speed. You can't really complain about that. It's just a flat bonus. Enjoy. Have a good time. That's... That's it. It's called Gulams. Uh, Praise the Creator was the active skill. Bond of Fate. Passive skill reducing skill damage taken from enemies by 30% and reducing counterattack damage taken by 20%. Everybody, when they first saw the first skill here, thought this was the best skill. The main skill, the active skill. It's a good skill. Don't get me wrong. It's got a lot going for it. I just went over it and it's pretty substantial. This third skill for Saladin is his best skill. This makes him into a cavalry tank for any other nuking style commander, and this enables him to attack infantry with impunity. Meaning, because of the counterattack damage taken reduction, and again, keep that in mind when we talk about our builds as well, right? Um, this makes him very, very tanky. And when we go into his talents, this skill is his best skill hands down. You can actually go, when you get a Saladin, you can max his first skill. You gotta max his first skill, okay? But you can actually unlock him to the third skill. You can go 5-1-1, one, one, okay? The second skill is good. The stats are awesome, but this is his best skill. And if you, you, if you know you're not going to be able to max him out, at least not very quickly, you want this third skill maxed. This third skill and the first skill right behind it. If you've got both of those maxed, you have a very solid Saladin on the battlefield. He doesn't need to be expertise. Now, his expertise is nice. It buffs the first skill, but it's not a must-have hands down like a Genghis or an Alex or something like that. So his third skill is his best, all right? Fourth skill, Generosity. This gives a flat 15% damage dealt to city garrisons that's pretty sweet. This makes him a very, very solid rallier of a city. Very similar to a Mehmed. In fact, a 
Saud and Mehmed rally is probably one of the better rallies out there against a city because you're super tanky. We just talked about that. You reduce their healing if they've got a healer in the garrison, God forbid. But then you also reduce your your uh, skill damage taken as well. You reduce your their counterattack damage to you as well, which is huge when you're rallying. Counterattack damage is a big, big deal when you're rallying and defending cities. That's a big, big thing. So this is a good skill if you are into rallying cities. I am, however, it doesn't happen very often because we have a peaceful kingdom. However, KVK coming around, this will come in very, very good handy. So the downside of this skill, getting that 15% bonus, though, you do not get to get any resources whenever you plunder the city. So whenever you attack a city and you bring the army down to nothing, right, you don't get any resources afterward. Usually you get your share of resources whenever you hit and defeat a city. This skill deletes that functionality, but 15% damage helps you to destroy the city. So that's very, very nice. You can destroy the city, then come on the back end with other armies that aren't necessarily led with Saladin, and you can go get your resources, your sweet, sweet resources. So that's the thing. And then finally, again, his um, his expertise. The first skill is actually called Hold hold Fast. Right. His first skill is called Hold Fast, but when you expertise him, it's called Praise the Creator. And again, it just gives an enhancement to the nuke damage by 300. It increases the reduction to march speed on your enemy by another 20%, and another 10% increase up to 50 for the healing effect received de uh, debuff that you give your enemy as well. So again, it's just a buff to your active skill, making it that much better. Again, not necessary because the skill's already pretty good. Uh, and 30% versus 50% march speed, you'll be able to catch them either way, I think. But it's still nice, right? If you're gonna if you're gonna put the effort into maxing them out, why not get a little bit more benefit? That makes total sense. But again, to recap, third skill is the best skill. Hold fast slash praise the creator is the next best skill. In my opinion, Gulam's the second skill is the third best and all that good stuff going into the expertise. Let's get into the talents and then we're going to jump into the pairings. All right, so this is my first one. I've got three and I've got them labeled on the top right there. So my first one I'm going to go over is more of a balanced tank and I'll tell you how I came up with that kind of combination. Then we'll go into the anti-skill build and then we'll go into the rage damage with some defense uh, talent build as well so firstly again i'm getting a couple things here to give me balanced reduction of damage taken from all types of armies okay so whether i'm attacking infantry archers or other calf okay and again keep in mind archers and calf generally you're going to be going up against skill damage right let's be honest there's not really a whole lot of troop damage until Attila and Takeda really start coming out and coming to play. That's really all you're facing is skill damage when you're talking about Cav and Archers. So with that in mind, here's the key pieces of this build. All right, you've got Rejuvenate to, again, Rejuvenate Rage. You want to you want to bring as much Rage to the fight as possible. You've got Burning Blood giving you another uh, 9 Rage, which again, you need anyway. Loose Formation giving you a 9% skill damage taken reduction. Emergency Protection. 50% chance you'll get an additional 15% skill damage reduction on for the next three seconds. So again, if you get nuked in that next three seconds, you'll have a 15% less damage from that nuke. Okay, so that's the idea. That's from the support tree. Then you go up to the cav tree. You've got charge, which increases your speed after you lose 50% of your army. You got emblazoned shield. That's another 12% uh, skill damage taken reduction. That's huge. Uh, halberd, additional damage to archers. That's just health. That's not that big of a deal. And then finally, undying fury. Another nine rage when you do a normal attack, which is all the time. Okay. And then finally, on the conquering tree, to give a little bit more tankiness, we went and got buckler shield to give you a nine percent counterattack damage taken reduction. Again, pairing up very nicely with that third skill and helping us even further when we go to attack infantry because we, we know, we've done testing, it's been done for a while. Saud and Genghis, and we'll go into the pairings. A lot of these pairings, 
destroy Richard Charles, which used to be the unbeatable pairing. You could pair, you can go up against anybody with Richard Charles a year ago, and you would not lose. There was, you, there was just no way. And a lot of times it would be Richard Charles versus three armies, and you still wouldn't lose. Whereas now you've got Saladin, you've got some of these other commanders that you can bring to the battlefield that can now take out those pairings, and pretty darn effectively. I might add. It's not um, it's not as bad as you would think considering infantry are supposed to take out Cav. Okay? So that's the first build. And again, pretty good build, very balanced, not doing too much of one thing, but giving you all the different utilities that all three of these talent trees can give you. Okay? So anti-skill is the second build. This is the one that gives you the most skill damage taken reduction meaning if you're going to only be fighting other skill damage builds and you want to get the maximum amount of tankiness against that skill damage which is the biggest damage in the game right now on the battlefield is skill damage this is the build for you you get all the goodies that we just talked about with the rejuvenate you get the emergency protection you get loose formation you get emblazoned shield you also get Disarm, which gives you a 10% chance to reduce the enemy attack by a further 20% for two seconds. And this thing pops all the time, okay? this give, But this gives you everything. And this even gives me a little one point here. I'm going to put it right here. <laughs> I'll put that point right here. Again, I like this one because the only thing that I'm losing is Disarm, but I gain 9% counterattack damage taken. That's why the balance part of it comes in. But Anti-Skill... This, this applies to troop damage and um, and skill damage because it, the, the attack reduction during a skill is, is factored in. It doesn't really go straight to the skill damage, but it has a formulation inside of the skill damage that allows you to do what you want to do. I prefer the balanced tank, which is why I've got that currently on over the anti-skill, but you can do it that way and be just fine. Now, my next build, this is more for one-on-one. -on -one. It's more for smaller scale fights. Uh, it's not necessarily made for swarm fights, like a big KBK fight or um, even arc. It's kind of borderline, but it does work. It does work in arc, and I actually kind of like it. I have tried it a couple times. Uh, this also was uh, mentioned earlier in another one of my streams. Uh, Rick has something very similar to this build. Um, his is a little different than mine, but I I will give him kind of a little bit of credit for this because it kind of spurred my thought and maybe uh, tweaking what I did to this build. So this is the Rage Damage build. This gives me as much Rage as possible, as much tankiness as possible for the most part, but it gives me a maximum amount of damage at the beginning of a fight, okay? So we still get our Rejuvenate, which gives us our Rage, right? We still got Burning Blood on the way as well. We lose loose formation, which is a thing, okay? That's 9% skill damage taken reduction. In addition, we lose emergency protection, okay? So that's another percentage chance skill, 50% chance that we will gain an additional 15% skill damage taken reduction for three seconds, okay? So we're giving up a little bit of skill damage taken reduction. However, we're gaining Rallying Cry, which I'll go back to that since there's a buff going. We still have Buckler Shield, Moment of Triumph. Okay, so this is where the Conquering Tree comes into play. While the army led by this commander is at not more than 90% strength, which again, Saladin is tanky, and if you've got a full uh, army expansion on, that's not bad, okay? Um, increases all damage dealt by 9%. So as long as you are above 90% strength, and again, some of the pairings will help you stay there, if that makes sense. Um, all your damage is increased by 9%. That's pretty substantial, okay? And then pair that up with Rallying Cry, increases all damage dealt by 15%. All damage dealt by 15% during the first 10 seconds of entering a battle. So that stacks with Moment of Triumph. Another all damage dealt by 9%. That's 24% extra damage right off the bat okay now again keep those in mind when we start talking about some of the damage pairings but this is i, I really like this build and it's it's again I, I had something similar to this but 
I will, again, give a little bit of credit to Big Rick here because he made me kind of see a little bit more of the one versus one side of it and why this worked. Because before I was like, you're giving up way too much skill damage taken reduction. Why would you do that? But the more I thought about it, the more this makes sense because you're doing so much more damage right up front. The less troops you're getting hit by, the less damage you're taking. So it just all kind of works. Um, so that's why this build works. And in fact, I am actually thinking about switching to this build because of that. And I want to test it out in ARC, and I want to test it out in KVK coming up hopefully in the next few weeks so that we can see how that plays out. But otherwise, I like my balance tank build, and I like my rage damage build. Those are my main two. I do kind of like the anti-skill, but I'd rather, to me, I'd rather have the extra um, counterattack damage and rage from the balance tank build versus disarm, but it still works. You can try whichever one fits your play style the best and go for it from there okay so let's jump into the pairings so this is the pairing screen we're going to make this a little fun i used to make a little graphic that i'd pop up on the screen and then we just kind of read through everything i'm trying to make it a little bit more interactive for you guys and a little bit more enticing so that you enjoy what you see so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go um with the with, again, this is, an, this is a PvPer, guys. I mean, you can use him for PvE, but you don't really need me to tell you what to pair with him for PvE. Because if you've got him, and you've got him at 5-something, you're good. <laughs> you're pretty much good. You don't need anything else, necessarily. Uh, if you're using him in PvE, you're either trying to level him up, or you're trying to take out a, uh, a KvK type of boss, or objective, or... You're trying to do Kerouac or something like that. And again, that's pretty self-explanatory, pretty straightforward. You can use him with any Cav Commander, any Nuking Commander, and you will be really, really good shape. Okay, so these are going to be the PvP pairings, and I'll talk through each one on which one makes sense from a role perspective. But this will give you what you need on the battlefield to give you the best pairings for the best reasons. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is jump into the best Cav Commander in the game alongside of Saladin, which is Genghis. And you can do the pairing either way you choose. You can do Saladin Primary and Genghis Secondary, or you can do Genghis Primary, Saladin Secondary. If you do Saladin Primary, you're going to get the extra oomph up front because you've got the, the Conquering Tree available to you. And you're also going to have some more skill damage taken reduction and rage regen. However, if you go Genghis Primary, you're going to have more raw damage on your skill because he's got the skill tree versus a support tree. So whatever role you need them to play, I swap them all the time. They both have the same equipment. They both have the same setups on my presets. It's just who do I want for which role and which role do I need right now? That's when I start swapping them around, okay? But this is the best pairing in my opinion because it gives you double damage nuke for uh, possibility for Genghis. It still gives you a ton of tankiness if you use Salad in primary. And again, they just work really well together. All their stuff jives together, okay? The second best pairing that I like is double C. And this is also a really kind of, I'd almost say 1B, because he has a heal, he gives you the ability to um, just have a lot of damage going out on top of some mobility. Even though he's a peacekeeping commander, he's got attack reduction from his main skill. He's got march speed reduction in conjunction with the other march speed reduction, he's got more damage factor, he's got tons more march speed bonuses and attack bonuses. I mean, he's also got the heal and rage restoration on top of rejuvenate with Saladin being primary. And I would always have in this combination, Saladin primary, double C secondary. Do not put double C primary, Saladin secondary. You're just going to have a really fast semi-nerfed cav group. It could be better. Just swap them. Okay, just have Saladin primary, double C secondary. So Chow Chow secondary, all right? So again, those that pairing is a very solid one as well. If I've got Genghis doing something else, I pop double C on the back end of Saladin and I'm off to the races and I do not have any worries in the world. My next uh, legendary commander for him will be Minnow. Again, very similar to the double C equation. However, double C has a heal, he has a rage regeneration capability, whereas Mina is more skill damage focused, so his primary skill does more damage than double C. However, 
He doesn't have the extra utility things that go along with double C, which is why I have Minna third, but still a very good combo. Same premise as with Genghis. You can do them either or primary, depending on what you want to happen. If you want more damage, go Minna primary. If you want more survivability, more tankiness, more utility, go Saladin primary. That's the way I would do it. I also have three other legendaries that I wanted to bring up, and not because they're necessarily the best, but I want you to kind of think about some things, okay? Uh, they all work really well with Saladin, and you can pair them up a couple different ways, but on the battlefield, there's always different things happening, and a lot of times I'll be fighting, and something will be happening in front of me, and I'm like, if I pair these two up, this will work really well, and I just do it, and sometimes it works. So I want you to kind of think about some of the things that I'm thinking so that you can give me some feedback in the comments below or whatever, and we can talk about it because I've got some ideas on, you know, just how these things work. The first one's Freddy. Again, same premise from Double C. He's got a heal. He doesn't have the rage regen, but he's got one of the best nukes in the game. And with Saladin having Rejuvenate, which is the best rage regen skill in the game, or rage regen talent in the game, I should say, why not have that best skill in the game from Freddy, the highest skill damage in the game, going off as much as possible is my thought. So from a single target perspective, Saladin and Freddy is not a bad idea. You're tanky and you're putting out a ton of skill damage and you get a heal and you get 15% troop capacity, which means you're bringing more troops to the battlefield. And if you're using that rage damage build that I talked about earlier, that enhances Moment of Triumph and rallying cry because it lasts that first 10 seconds doesn't last longer but the the percentage the, the top 10 percent of your armage army size does last longer because you have more troops more troops equals bigger 10 percent that makes sense so that's my thought on freddy i think that's a really good combo as well you can go salad and freddy and be in really good shape my next pairing is ysg Again, Rage, right? So Saladin has the support tree. Rejuvenate is awesome. YSG's second skill has a Rage Regeneration, Rage Restoration component to it. And his uh, fourth skill pumps up the active skill damage of all commanders in that group by 50%. That certainly will help Saladin's 1700 damage factor skill damage. That's, all, that's always good, right? There's nothing inside of... YSG's skill set that doesn't apply with the exception of the Archer bonus and obviously a Garrison skill um, to Saladin. So that first skill obviously is very helpful. It's an AoE that's massive damage. It's a unique AoE that no other commander has. And also the bonuses help both commanders. The Raid Restoration helps both commanders. It can fire off any time. And there's, you know, there's just so many things going for it. YSG, that's why YSG is one of the best commanders in the game. And that's why he works with everybody. He's got a lot of utility. So he also works with Saladin as a secondary because you can do Cav. You can do full Cav and have YSG second and it will work. Okay? Promise you 100%. And then lastly on the, the legendary front, I've also got Alex. Again, a little weird, but I want you to think about it, right? Saladin's already tanky. So add in Alex with a shield, right? That's always good. Alex also has a nuke as well, which isn't an active nuke, but fires off pretty frequently, I would say. He also has a healing debuff as well. And again, both of them last five seconds. So theoretically, you can pretty much lock down a healer with that combination of Saladin, Alex. You can also go Alex, Saladin, and go full infantry, and that would work very well because then you start utilizing Alex's 40% um, what is it 40 or 30 30 or 40 percent March speed he's got bonuses to uh, I think the health of troops let me see just to make sure no it's a 30 percent March speed and 30 percent attack so you got 30 percent attack on that third skill and then also you have attack bonuses when his shield is uh, up and then when his shield is down or when his shield is down and when his shield is up you have a defense bonus of 30 percent too and then also you're debuffing your target with his expertise as well increasing the damage taken by up to three targets by 30 percent for four seconds that is huge you can do so much 
with that combination, I think. That's kind of the wild card dark horse combination that I don't see a lot of people using that I think would do really, really well on the battlefield. You can even make that part of, uh, and in fact, I'm, I'm actually already thinking about it, making that a part of my five infantry army group doing Alex primary and Salad and secondary. So something to think about. That's all the legendaries. Let me also do the epics as well, just because I want you to see how I would pair them up. One, two, three. Um, there's also a fourth one that's there that you guys know I don't like, and I just don't feel a need to put it up there, but I'll mention him. Uh, first pairing that I would go with, if you want to pair him up with a uh, an epic commander, so a purple commander, would be Pelagius. In my opinion, again, it's got rage component to it. It's got a uh, heal component. It's got damage over time. It's, I mean, he's got everything that works really well synergizing-wise with Saladin. Same thing on the primary versus secondary that I mentioned with the other cavalry skill damage commanders or cavalry skill talent path commanders. You can do either or depending on which role you want. Same thing with bay bars. I really like this because they both have the same talents trees except for support over skill. So again, very, very similar. You can even do a uh, bay bars primary and still get that moment of triumph and buckler shield for the counterattack damage reduction and have skill damage rejuvenate and rallying cry. You can do all those things, okay? Just the same way that we just did with, um, with Saladin just a few moments ago. And then finally, I like Osman for any skill damage build. He works really well as a second. I would not put him as a first because he does not have a specific troop type, especially if you've got a Saladin. Certainly put Saladin first in that pairing. Uh, and that's the way I would set them up. But, but Osman complements Saladin really well with a lot of extra nuking. Again, more troop capacity is always a good thing, uh, which gives, uh, again, a lot of the builds that we just went over more spiciness, a little bit more potency because of the extra troops that you can bring makes that damage bonuses that you get from the talent paths last longer. So that's the way I would do it, guys. That's my pairing guide. That's my talent build guide. And that's my rundown of Saladin. I hope you enjoyed. Please like and subscribe if you have not done so already. Please leave a comment below. And let's have a chat about what you think about Saladin. Is he the best Cav Commander in the game? I think he is one of, if not the best right now. We've got two more coming out. We'll see how those two play out. But Saladin is a force to be reckoned with on the battlefield. I hope you enjoyed. Take care. I'll see you all later. Cheers.